I want to read this morning from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 15. And I want you to see some things here that you've probably read before, but I'm going to expound. I'm going to, I hope to help you see some of the things that you might not have seen before that God has truly revealed to me in a very powerful way. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 15, starting here through 18. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. Somebody say amen to that. Now, that's not going to be my focus, but it really is part of it. But always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Both for yourselves and for all. It's okay to pursue things that are good for you. It's not selfish. But do it also for everyone. But notice what it says here. This is powerful. Those are powerful verses. But this is even greater advancement in what I'm going to talk to you about today. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Listen, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I got a, I got a good mumble. I got a few amens. Let me read it again. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. Now, are those things, do those things seem impossible for you? Do they seem absolutely out of reach for you? Because it does for most of us. You're not alone. But we're going to learn some things that we can do in the midst of hard moments in order to grow into these things. But then he says, he says, in everything, give thanks. And this is the kicker. This is the reason why I'm preaching it today. This is the hope of God for you. No, it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. It is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Lord, it breaks off doubt. It builds faith in our hearts. Lord, the entrance of your word brings light to us. Lord, your word is like a sword. It just cuts and it pierces. It discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It pierces between soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It's always discerning every part of our lives if we will let it. And we want to let it today. Hallelujah. Lord, you have exposed me with this passage, and it has been so good. It has been so good. And I thank you, Father, that you are going to do that for all of us, not to shame us, not to... Not to cause us to hang our head in defeat, but to inspire us to greater levels of faith and obedience and fruitfulness in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen, amen and amen. I want to talk to you, as you can see on the screen, the power, the power of gratitude. Now, gratitude, without question, is God's pathway to encounters, divine encounters with God. And yes, on the back uh, table back there, there are notes for you to take home or take now so you can fill in the blank. Why does your heavenly father, why does he want you to give thanks in everything? Just think about it, no answers. Just think about it. Why does he want you and me to give thanks in everything? Well, the simple reason, just off the top of your head, I'm sure, perhaps there are things that arise, but he knows, listen, the reason why he wants you to give thanks in everything, you may not know what's going to happen next. You may not see 
the end result. But he wants you to give thanks to him in everything because he knows what he is about to do for you. Does that make sense? Because when you see your life from God's perspective, you have, you know, a 20,000 foot view of everything in front of you. You may not be able to see from the perspective of the terrestrial, that is the earthly, but if you see things from the vision of God for your life, he is saying it is his will for my life, it is his will for every Christian, for every believer to give thanks in everything, to pray without ceasing, and to rejoice in everything. Maybe not for everything, because some things are really tough, but in everything. He knows what he's going to do. Instead of you and I opting to complain, somebody say, that's not me. Oh, don't lie. Don't lie. Instead of doubting, instead of nursing old wounds, we are to give thanks and everything. Now, this is a really challenging thing for most all of us, if not all of us. And I've been, I've been walking with God for over four decades now, and it is still a challenge, but a challenge that I want to take on. Somebody say amen, because if you don't take this on, it's not going to go well. You got to take it on. The apostle Paul put it this way. He said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, starting there, he says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear or with awe and reverence and trembling before God. For it is God, listen, who is working in you. Ever I look at your neighbor and say, God is working in you. He is working in you. And what is he doing? He's doing his will. He's doing, it is God who is working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, you have to be okay with that. Why? Because his good pleasure and his will is the best thing for your life. It's very easy for us to say, okay, God, I understand. Your will is what's best for me. But if you're going to operate in pride or some sort of rebellion, then you're going to say, I want what's best for me. But yeah, And so you have to learn some things of being obedient to God's will. And so the will of God is to give thanks and everything. That is a huge part of it. But here's the point. Here it is. This is what he says. Do all things. Everybody say all things. Do everything that you do from the time that you wake up in the morning with a, with a you know, a hurting back or a, a shoulders like mine that don't hardly move in the morning until you start to move them. Somebody say amen. Do all things without complaining. You know what the word complaining means? It means murmuring. Nobody else may hear it, but God hears it. Everybody smile at me. I'm going to show you the positives here in a moment. Do all things, Paul says, without complaining or murmuring or disputing. That is arguing. That's taking it to a whole new level. You might want to argue with God. You might even argue with yourself. And that's pretty bad. But you might argue with others. Do all things without complaining and disputing that, listen, here's the reason. This is why. Not only does your father already know what he wants to do, but this is what he says, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice, Paul says, or the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain and labored in vain. Do you hear that? The re one of the great reasons why we are to develop a heart of gratitude before God is so that people can't point at us 
and, 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 or, and if they do, it's a false accusation that we may be blameless, maybe not in their eyes, but before God. Somebody say amen. If, if, you know, if I'm trying to appease people and just, uh, you know, doing what pleases them, then they may like me the whole time that I'm living. But there are, you know that's almost impossible, right? But you can be harmless and blameless before God. And you can be without fault before God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Did you know today people call good evil and evil good? So you got to kind of get used to that and just try to shine the light of Jesus in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation, holding forth the word of life. You may be criticized by others for doing that, but you still have to give thanks to God and everything because suddenly at some point they're going to give up on criticizing you and see the blessing of God upon your life because God is moving in such a way in your life as to bring about fruit because you're praising him, to bring about divine encounters because you're praising him. Does that make sense? Now, your heavenly father wants you to give thanks. It will be a huge difference, listen, for you and for your family. I had to learn this as a dad when I'm tired, wiping the sleep out of my eyes, helping Kim with the baby, and she had to learn it too, and the babies eventually, and all the things that pastors, you have to develop in order to stay in this thing as long as we have, I'm going to tell you, you must develop a heart of gratitude. I want to look to Brian and Hannah right now. Develop, I know you already have, a heart of gratitude before God. If you want to outlast your critics, develop a heart of gratitude before God. If you want to outlast the devil, develop a heart of gratitude before God. It makes a huge difference in so many dynamic ways. In your life, when you determine, and you must determine to, and, and this week and next week, we're going to talk about some personal things next week, but I'm giving you kind of the introduction right now. Let me turn to parents real quick, and some of you have already raised your kids, but you have to understand, if you're a grandparent, you're still a parent. Somebody say amen. According to a study published in Applied Development science. This is, this is profound. And Chris, you may, you may have probably read some of these stats. This is tremendous. Researchers have found that grateful parents tend to raise thankful children. Somebody say amen. Come on, give God praise. It's, it's true. If, if you raise a thankful child, you are more than likely a grateful parent. You are continually and consistently and faithfully offering thanks to God. And just not to God. There are other things, there's other people that you can give thanks to as well. But mainly for Christians, it is giving God thanks. It is pouring out our heart of thanksgiving to God. It doesn't take, re it really doesn't take researchers to notice this. If a parent tends to turn the tide of bickering in the family, especially among siblings and all of that, if you can learn the key to turning the tide into thanksgiving to God or being thankful for the blessings of God that he has given to us, instead of frustration, many times being a parent, it can be very frustrating but you can do it. Somebody say amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, the fact is when children grow up watching their parents say, or a parent, a single parent, and by the way, single parents are heroes. Somebody say amen to that. They are heroes. When children grow up watching their parents or parent thank God or thank others, even sometimes writing thank you notes, teaching your children to write thank you notes when they get older. They learn it. They learn to be grateful this way, 
and they learn it by example. Teach your child. And we did this at the dinner table. We did it uh, in the public. We did it at church. We did it everywhere. Teach your child to be thankful. Now, this isn't all that I'm going to preach on, but I have found that this research has encouraged me and it's encouraged so many others to just press through and be thankful. In thankful homes, parents talk about their daily blessings. Even in difficulty, they find things for which to be thankful. All this is a part of the research. This, listen, and this is the conclusion. This creates optimistic hearts in children. It creates hope that, see, they don't know how to process bad news. Children, teenagers, they don't know how to process bad news. They get frustrated. They see their friends pouting, getting angry, uh, rebelling. No, no, no. They must learn from us, the leaders in the church, parents, all of us, that we are to give thanks. We are to demonstrate thanks to God. They find it easier in life to grow a heart of gratitude and learn to respond to God this way. It's a pathway. Gratitude is a pathway to divine encounters. Doesn't matter how hard it is. I can do all things. Listen, I'll say it again. I can do all things. I Say it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, Christian parents that faithfully do this, this heart of gratitude, <clears throat> listen, Children learn, and you learn, I learn. I learn this every time I do it. I relearn it, that God responds to a heart of gratitude. Let's just, let's just look at the opposite. Let's say that we're learning the habits of murmuring and complaining. What if we learn the habits of arguing? And it's easy to do. You can get sucked down that, that pipe right there, down that place. You can go and spiral down. But somebody must put an end to it. Somebody say amen. This heart of gratitude that Kim and I have tried to exemplify, I believe it produces joy. Now, we've not been perfect, no. And even now, we're pressing through, even in our own lives. We're, we're our own best encouragers. We encourage one another to continue many times, just to continue, press through, Whatever pain you're feeling in your body, believe God for your healing. At six, in your 60s, how many understand you're not 20 anymore? Hallelujah. And so you press through, you give thanks. Thank God. Thank you for my healing, Jesus, that you have provided for my healing. Amen. I'm learning this from my dad, too. 92. He just got healed. His eyes. He was, he was going, he was, the devil was taking his eyesight. And he gets healed by the power of God. Somebody say amen. 92. This never ends, by the way. It doesn't have to end. There's no limits with God. So thankfulness is, lear is a learned skill. You're not born with it. You, you are born crying and complaining. Your first language is crying. That's your first communication to the world. I am not happy. Change my diaper. All of us were there. I am hungry. Get out of my face. And so thankfulness is the very opposite of that. Can you see how it pleases God? Can you see how being thankful to him in the midst of everything that we go through in the midst of a perverse and crooked generation, by the way, this whole world is dead set against your Christian philosophy, your Christian behavior. Everything is set against it. But I'm going to tell you, even those in the world who learn to be thankful, even to God, even if they don't know God, God hears that. He knows that, and we see that. We're going to find that out in the Word of God. They, they know God, the Bible says, but they don't acknowledge Him as God. They know God, but they don't acknowledge Him, nor do they give thanks. And so God says, I'll just turn you over, and I'll not go into that until next week. There's a real problem with knowing God 
and not honoring God. But we as Christians, we have this, we have this joy in earthen vessels and we don't always stir it up. Everybody say, stir it up. Stir it up. Amen. Gratitude. Everybody say gratitude. gratitude. And you've heard this. It's not a new saying. Gratitude and attitude. They rhyme. Did you know that? <laughs> you didn't know that. Yes, you did. Gratitude is the attitude. Listen, fully devoted followers of Jesus work to develop in their life each day. Why? Why? You got to know the why. Because if you don't know the why, you won't be able to sustain a heart of gratitude. Why? Because it's the will of God for my life. Just, just like loving my wife, just like loving my children, just like loving my neighbor, just like attending the house of God, being faithful to God in his house, just like reading his word, just like loving the sinner, everything, the will of God, just like giving and tithing. Somebody say amen. Giving thanks is not to be dismissed or not to be marginalized. There's power in it. There are divine encounters in it. I can say for certain it's not the will of God <laughs> to complain. Somebody say amen. That is not, everybody say amen. Mm, I don't know if you believe that or not. Sometimes you get your way by complaining. Oh, and it's tempting. Oh, it's tempting. It's tempting. It's not God's way. Now, you can make requests. You can be kind. But, you, but learn not to complain. Now, I, when, I, when I point this way, I got three other fingers pointing back at me. Amen? This passage does not say that we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in everything air your grievances in Christ, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It does not say that. And so, what does it say? It says give thanks. So did you know, listen, I'm going I'm to shift a little bit to the negative because we have to see really what the enemy loves for us to do before we can see the value many times of what God wants us to do in giving thanks. Did you know complaining is listed in the Bible with some very destructive sins? Let me go through this real quick. Israel in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 says, Now these things... That is, the things that Israel did became our examples to the intent that we should not lust. There's the first thing. There's five things here. We should not lust after evil things as they also lusted and do not become idolaters. There's the second sin as were some of them, not all of them, some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play, nor let us commit sexual sin. There's the third. I mean, these are really tragic sins. As some of them did, some, again, not all, and in one day 23,000 died, they fell. Nor let us tempt Christ or the anointed one. For them it was Moses. As some of them also tempted, there's the fourth thing, that is you're just testing God, angry at God, angry at the, anoint, the anointed one, and were destroyed by the serpents, nor complained. There's the fifth thing. Did you know that complaining is listed with those sins? Oh, is there conviction flowing yet? I, when I read this, I was convicted. I had to repent. I said, Lord... And it, you'll notice that when you, re, when you recalibrate, everybody say recalibrate. You, you, stand, you land on the word of God. Somebody say amen. You land on the word of God. Okay, this is what he said. I'm going to do this for the next 24 hours. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do it. You will notice how negative everybody else is. <laughs> you will notice just how negative. Everything else is. People who haven't, even Christians. And, and many times you, you, you just have to, everybody say, you, anybody remember Barney Fife? All right, remember he used to say, zip it, zip it, zip, just zip it. Somebody say amen. This is the best thing. 
zip it. This is incredible. As some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Did you know the devil wants to destroy your witness? He wants to destroy the fruit of Jesus. He wants to tear your family apart. If we learn to complain, if we operate in complaints and defeat and doubt and murmuring, all of that. Listen, now all these things happened. What things? Things with Israel in the wilderness. They could have been giving thanks to God for the deliverance, for the great uh, deliverance through the Red Sea, the manna, the water from the rock, everything that God was establishing in their life. No, but many chose, or some, I should say, chose to complain. These things happen for our example. Somebody say amen. Did you know complaining, as we see here, it it opens us up to satanic attack. Demonic activity happens. See, murmuring and complaining opens the door to very negative things for your personal life, for your own emotional health. Somebody say amen. I, the, the negative wheel, do not let it spin. Get that hamster off of that wheel. It, it develops in your family. It spreads to even friendships at work. Listen, arguing, arguing, murmuring, complaining, exacerbates and escalates an already tough situation. How many have experienced that? No, don't raise your hand. And so you got to learn to pause. What does the Bible say? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath or anger. Arguing exacerbates it, but many of us have got to learn to flip the switch. Say, flip the switch. Flip the switch to gratitude. Swip, flip, flip the switch. Swip, I'm just going to make up a word. Swip the flitch. Flip the switch. (laughs) Flip the switch to gratitude. Flip it to praise. I was going to do it again. That's why you never repeat bad language. It just keeps coming out. You got to flip the switch. You got to turn on Thanksgiving. Giving of praise and thanksgiving to God. Many times Kim and I, we will just pause. We can be in the car. We can be at home. We can be talking. And, and, and we'll just, one of us will just, just pray. Just, you know, we, I, we don't say, hey, let's pray. Let's pray. No, we just start praying. Somebody say amen. You just, thank you, Jesus, that this enemy is already defeated. Thank you, Jesus, that I am already healed by your strife. See, depression wants to billow in. It wants to billow in, and it wants to pile on your bad situation. But how many know God knows how to deliver you and I from bad situations? Oh, hallelujah. You got to do it. James, listen, I'll just, this will be the end of the negative right here. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? He says, let him show by good conduct. And I believe good conduct before God is thanksgiving, gratitude. That his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Gratitude, I believe, is, the de- is demonstrating the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. And by the way, arguing, just it, pride just begins to billow up. I'm offended now. They're not siding with me. How do I know all these things? Because I'm a human just like you. I've had to learn this many times the hard way. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Amen. Somebody say amen. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown 
Somebody say amen. Is that how? He says now. Everybody say now. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And how do you do that? How do you make peace with yourself? Start praising Jesus. How do you make peace in the midst of your tough circumstance? You start praising the Lord out loud. Do it out loud. Amen. Do it out loud so the devil can hear you. Do it out loud so the angels can hear you. God sees your heart, but the devil doesn't know your heart. God knows your heart and mind. The devil will yield and flee when you rebuke him with praise and with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus did this exact same thing. And this is very important. So let's look at the power of gratitude. Here's my one point today. Can you believe I only have one point? No, I've I've given you many points. We're going to continue this next week. It's going to be really fun. Number one, gratitude, listen, is the attitude to which God responds. He responds favorably. In every situation, God knows what he is planning to do, as I said. And the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and me, this very day, when you go to work on on Monday, as you go to work, as you go, learn to be grateful in all things. Jesus knew that gratitude was, and it still is, the pathway to divine encounters, the miraculous Moments that God wants to demonstrate in your life. And Jesus demonstrated this. Let's look at the five fish and loaves. Remember that great story in the Bible? It's fascinating to me. It never gets old. Jesus did this same miracle two times in the Bible. At least two. That's recorded. One, he, he multiplied fish and loaves for 4,000. That's this example. And another one, 5,000. But there's one thing that he did that is so incredibly powerful that you and I can learn from. John 6, verse 5. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread, notice this, that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Isn't that what I just told you? God knows what he's going to do in tough situations. And by the way, when you're in the wilderness and you have no food and there's 5,000 men, not to, include, not, to, not to include women and children, it could have been upwards to 10,000, 15,000 people that Jesus is asking one of his disciples whom he is endeavoring to build the faith of his disciples. He's always working on you. What is he doing? He is working his will on the inside of you. It is the Father's good pleasure to work his will in your life. He knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him. And, you know, nat- you know, we just go to the natural answer. But how many know giving thanks turns to the supernatural things of God. Hallelujah. Notice this. He said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Andrew was kind of, he had a little faith here, but it didn't show up too much. But this is the power of gratitude. Here's my point. Andrew said, this is Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Never dismiss, never marginalize the small things that God has put in your heart or put in your hands. Never, ever. Notice what Jesus said. Make the people sit down. Now notice this. This is a comparison between the children of Israel in the wilderness and Jesus in the wilderness. Moses, whom they were complaining against, remember the manna, remember the, remember the, the water, and then Jesus in the wilderness. Now this is not millions, but this is still, still thousands. But Jesus had everyone sit down. I've noticed that if I can just sit down in the midst of a tough situation and just get collect my thoughts and begin to give thanks to God. It's a physical act that will help you. Or kneel, many times kneeling down and praying and giving thanks to God will change everything. I've noticed that when people stand up, 
It, 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 it makes them bigger. And pride begins. If, if you're boasting and arguing out when you're standing up, no. When, remember when Jesus was with the ones condemning the woman taken in adultery? What did he do? He stooped down. What did he do? And he wrote. No one knows what he wrote. But then he had the answer. He said, you without, you without sin cast a first stone. And he kept writing, hallelujah, till the Holy Ghost took over, hallelujah. But look at this. I love this. Make them all sit down. Now, there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down in number, about 5,000, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, somebody say amen. He distributed them, that is the fish and loaves, to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish. He gave thanks for the fish and distributed them as much as they wanted. So they were all filled. And he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments, much more, by the way, than what they placed in the hands of Jesus that Jesus gave thanks for so that nothing is lost, he says. Therefore, they gathered them up, filled the 12 baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Now, what am I saying here? I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus did exactly what you and I need to do in the midst of lack, in the midst of tough situations. Many people are going through hard times financially. There are difficult times ahead. Perhaps we don't know, but one thing is for sure, God will take the minimal and turn it into a maximum. He will multiply. This is supernatural multiplication. Many times your tithe is a sacrifice. It is just the fish and the loaves, but you have to do it in order. Listen, you you don't have to, but you want to. Somebody say amen. You want to. Why? Because God responds to a thankful heart. Gratitude is our responsibility. Supernatural multiplication is his. Hallelujah. God knows what he's going to do when you give thanks to him. And don't let Satan spoil what he wants to do. It's the will of God. Everybody say it with me. It's the will of God. To give thanks. One more example and I'll close. Come on up here, Deb, and worship team. Look at this. Gratitude is the attitude your heavenly father wants from you and everything. It's what he responds to. Gratitude is what your heavenly father is looking for. Not only Jesus in the wilderness, but here is the most difficult time to give thanks. Remember Lazarus. Now, Jesus was the most grateful individual anyone the world has ever known. And he empowers his disciples to be the same. The same Holy Spirit that dwelled in him dwells in us. The problem is, is that we have learned bad behavior. We have learned sinful behavior. Jesus never sinned, but there was still the temptation from the enemy to sin, but he refused it. Hallelujah. One of the great things that we see with Jesus at Lazarus' tomb is that in the face of our greatest enemy, and I've stood by the graveside of many, many, many wonderful people, including my own mother, my grandma and grandpa on both sides. Even even children that have gone too soon, teenagers too soon. Let me tell you something. There, if ever there are questions that arise that will cause any saint of God to doubt God. It's in those situations, and you must be extra diligent. Here's what Jesus did. Jesus stood by the tomb of Lazarus, and he prayed. 
John 11, verse 41 and 42, it says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. And what was he about to do? No one knew what he was about to do. Mary had hope. And so Jesus, before he did anything, before he raised Lazarus from the dead, what did he do? What did the people hear? They heard Jesus give thanks. I love it. As simple as that. At the graveside. Their grief was intense. Even Jesus felt the emotional distress and the sorrow. The Bible says that he groaned in the spirit. Listen, he groaned. He was troubled in his spirit. Listen, you can, be, you can have a heart of gratitude and still feel the sorrow of loss in your life. But don't lose a heart of gratitude. Don't sacrifice gratitude on the altar of sorrow. Learn to praise Him through it all. The Bible says later, later on in verse 35, it says Jesus wept. There were tears coming closer in verse 38 to the tomb. It says coming closer to the tomb, He again groaned in Himself. Even knowing that He was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Somebody say amen. Do you understand the hope that is in praise? Do you understand the power that is in gratitude? God knows what he's going to do. And let me tell you what he's going to do in every situation. What does it say in Romans 8.28? Come on. Anybody, can anybody quote it? All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Oh, the devil hates this because he's making champions out of you. Amen? Paul the apostle wrote these words. I'll read it quickly. 1 Thessalonians 5, we read it already. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God concerning you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Make music with from your heart to the Lord. Somebody say amen. From where? Your heart. Always giving thanks to God, the Father, for everything, in everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the will of God for you. Colossians 3.15 says, Be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell in you, among you, richly, as you teach and admonish one another. That's what I'm doing. Let the message of Christ. This is powerful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. How? By teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and psalms, hymns, spiritual psalms. Singing with what? Gratitude. Somebody say amen. When you come here, when Deb leads, listen, the worship team sing with gratitude. I feel you. I felt your gratitude today. I felt your gratitude when we were singing this. I know the Lord felt it in your heart. He sees it. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks, somebody say amen, amen. to who God, the Father through him. Stand with me. Next week I want to talk about why personal gratitude is so life-changing, life transformational. Bow your heads. Bring those lights down, Roger. Let me give you some concluding thoughts. Those of you watching, listen. Don't tune out yet. Some of you are struggling. In your walk with God, you're losing hope. You're losing the fire. You're losing the anointing of God. It's hard to even, it's hard. When you have let the things of the world creep in, push them out with praise to God. 
Work on an attitude of gratitude to God. 24 hours is my challenge. That's all. Work on it. Somebody say amen. Oh, yeah. Break the cycle right now, today, in your heart. Break it. How? Repent of any negativity, any worry and stress. God knows what he's about to do for you. He knows what he's about to do for you when you turn your problem into praise. Rebuke the devil. I said rebuke him loud. Get him out of your head and get him out of your life. Come on, somebody. I'm about to shout. I'm already shouting. I'm shouting. God's will for your life is so beautiful. It is a life of faith. And so many times you got to give God thanks by faith. Make this declaration. Repeat it after me. Come on, say it loud. Repeat it after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the revelation of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the revelation of gratitude and thanksgiving in everything. Thank you for your cleansing and forgiveness. I will not allow myself to be overcome with complaining. I will praise you. I will give thanks to you. I refuse to allow the enemy to lie to me. You're going to do good things for me. You always do good things for me. I choose to be thankful in everything because gratitude is your will for my life. I will know the truth and the truth will make me free. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for divine encounters over the next 24 hours, over the next 48 hours, over the next week, over the next month, into the new year, into the next year. Hallelujah! Divine encounters, powerful breakthroughs ahead of me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, come on, give him praise. One more.